what is the difference between a medical versus surgical versus radiation oncologist? In this video, I'll be going through the principles of treatment for gastroesophageal, differentiating the roles of the medical versus surgical versus radiation oncologists. Oncology is the study of tumors. Tumors in Greek is the word onkos, and that's the word the origin of the word oncology. Carcinoma is another word that we refer to when we talk about cancer. And the origin of that is also Greek by the uh, father of medicine, Hippocrates, who named it after Carcinos uh, or the crab, which was a giant crab in Greek mythology. He noted when he was observing his patients with cancer that very frequently, wherever the cancer originated, he noted that it would spread and invade to other areas in the body. And uh, noting that crabs are invasive predators in coastal ecosystems, uh, hence the, the uh, metaphor of, of the crab. Oncologist, again, is a medical practitioner then qualified to diagnose and treat cancer. So in the why do we stage and how do we stage uh, gastroesophageal cancer, we went through a number of different studies that are used that help to differentiate different treatment plans based on the actual stage from very early to locally advanced, both of which are curative, to more advanced and, and therefore palliative generally. And we talked about how the recurrence risk of these locally advanced tumors are relatively high and therefore adjunct treatments are given around the time of surgery, whereas earlier stages are not. And so each of these treatments are then done and performed by specialists. So first, something that we haven't mentioned much are in the very, very early setting uh, where it's a T1A, very superficial tumor and no clinical nodes involved, then, uh, then these tumors are amenable to, of course, surgery, but also a discussion would be had if whether um, an interventional gastroenterologist could perform an endoscopy and to perform an endoscopic mucosal resection, which is a resection of the superficial epithelial layer, or a more deep dissection called an endoscopic surgical dissection, or ESD. These two procedures performed by the interventional gastroenterologist um, are, are performed usually as a day, day procedure, and then you go home the same day. Interventional gastroenterologists are subspecialists within gastroenterology after completing a training in gastroenterology where they can do endoscopies and colonoscopies just to look and see. Interventional gastroenterologists do further training to be, be doing procedures such as uh, endoscopic mucosal resection, endoscopic surgical dissection, and endoscopic ultrasound. Surgery, of course, is performed by a surgical oncologist who's trained accordingly. And the chemotherapy or other systemic therapies that we'll talk about are performed by the medical oncologist. And then radiation performed by a radiation oncologist. Radiation is usually given along with chemotherapy, concurrent chemotherapy. Um, at, particularly in the curative intent setting, but also in the palliative setting, there are occasions where radiation can be used alone to um, palliate a symptom from a local mass that's resistant to systemic treatments. So a little bit further detail to get to know your treatment team, the medical oncologists, what they've gone through, uh, you can see that they're extensively trained in their field um, the, after completing an undergraduate degree in medical school, they then do an internal medicine residency for three years and then go on to do a fellowship in oncology. Usually oncology is coupled with uh, hematology and usually the clinical fellowships three years. Uh, some do extra research in their program and that would make it four years. Some oncologists are trained only in oncology and not hematology and that would be a two-year clinical fellowship. So Medical oncologists are trained in the art of the medical care of oncology patients. And because of their background and, and foundation of internal medicine training, they often serve as the central coordinator or the quarterback of care between all of the other specialists that you're gonna be seeing um, after you're diagnosed. They are specialized in the treatment of systemic therapy, which means it goes everywhere in your body. And that is, with classically chemotherapy, but also targeted therapy and immunotherapy, each of which we have 
separate videos to go through the, the mechanism and rationale of using those. And this is given or administered uh, intravenously, orally, intramuscularly, or subcutaneous. Various treatments uh, for the cancer specifically can be administered in various ways. Each of these, though, get into the bloodstream and then are delivered everywhere throughout the body, and hence why it's called systemic therapy. The surgical oncologist similarly also has a long uh, uh, history of training, and after medical school, they generally can be ranged between three to seven years for a general surgery residency, on average about five years, and then a surgical oncology fellowship where you're a surgeon that's specializing just surgeries for cancer um, is another two years, usually at academic centers that are, that are specialized in that fellowship. Again, surgeons are trained in the art of surgical clinical cares, looking at the, usually the primary tumor where it originated and removing it. Occasionally, um, as we'll talk about in gastroesophageal cancer, um, there are situations where there may be metastatic sites, but only a few, and that's called oligometastases. And we'll have a video specifically about that. And so occasionally that would be considered in other tumor types that is more commonplace, where even if it is stage four, say, for example, colon cancer, um, it is very common to remove both the primary tumor and metastatic sites. On the other hand, in gastroesophageal cancer, this is not as standard because uh, the tumor is a little bit more aggressive and the outcomes aren't as good. And so it doesn't justify going and doing surgery in that stage four setting. So again, generally, surgery is performed in the curative intent setting. Um, occasionally, there will be palliative surgeries um, without the intention of curing, but just to palliate symptoms. If there's a blockage, for example, we'll be talking about obstruction um, of, of the bowel, for example, caused by cancer, whether it's the primary tumor or metastatic sites, and occasionally palliative surgeries can be performed to alleviate that obstruction, but without the intention of removing all cancer, because we know that that's not possible in that situation, but at least we can improve uh, uh, symptoms. And then finally, another localized treatment like surgery is radiation therapy. And so a radiation oncologist, you can see their training trajectory here, um, also uh, a lengthy uh, training. So they're super specialized in the art of radiation treatment. Um, usually this is with radiation that's from an external beam um, from the outside that a patient doesn't feel. Uh, they are x-rays. Also, you may have heard of proton beam therapy, which are different types of radiation that are used. The, the general and more classic, uh, more widespread used uh, radiation is, is x-rays. And um, this usually, when we're talking about gastroesophageal cancer, is in the curative intense setting, and usually much more common in the proximal esophageal, uh, esophageal squamous cell tumors. Uh, there is debate uh, in terms of using it in the esophagus and G-junction adenocarcinomas, and there are trials ongoing to differentiate um, the benefit that might be there from using radiation versus chemotherapy alone. And there are many studies that have been done now that have shown that radiation doesn't add much to gastric cancer patients in the curative intent setting, so not commonly used there anymore. As I mentioned, radiation is usually used concurrently with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy helps the radiation to work better. It sensitizes the cells to be uh, sensitive to that radiation. And so they're often given together, particularly in that curative intense setting. So radiation oncologists work very closely with medical oncologists to coordinate that care. And, and, and there are cases that we'll talk about when we get into the treatment sections where a tumor that may not be resectable, um, but has not spread distantly sometimes can be amenable to a definitive chemo radiation plan where the radiation therapy is, is higher than uh, is used typically with intention to try and really control that primary tumor because that's the main problem and there's no evidence of metastatic sites, albeit not able to remove it surgically. And as I mentioned, radiation can be used and is used frequently in the palliative setting, usually alone, um, to sites, whether it's the primary tumor site and or metastatic sites that are symptomatic despite the systemic therapy. So they're resistant to therapy, but it's a localized problem that can be uh, addressed with radiation. Examples of that would be the primary tumor, for example, with persistent dysphagia or problem swallowing despite chemotherapy or after a period of time of improvement with chemotherapy, but then 
the the treatment stops working and the tumor becomes more resistant and so you get more dysphagia so that might be a time when radiation is used uh, other um, issues could be spread to the bone which can be painful and, and a, a isolated radiation to that lesion can be very palliative similarly if it's causing compression of the spinal cord which can cause neurologic symptoms the radiation can be used to uh, uh, and as a, a, a preferred treatment modality in that situation to uh, alleviate that ups, that pr that pressure on the ner the uh, the central nervous system the spinal cord and um, improve neurologic symptoms and the pain that may occur from a uh, lesion that's there in the spinal cord. So summarizing then, we talked about here that there are a number of different treatment paths depending on what stage your cancer is. And accordingly, different specialists within oncology may be involved. Early on, a medical oncologist is usually not involved, for example, whereas later on, uh, usually a surgical oncologist is not involved. And there are situations where radiation would be used both in the curative and the palliative setting, as I discussed. So in this video, we went through and differentiated the different roles of the medical oncologist versus the surgical oncologist versus the radiation oncologist. And that will set the tone now for moving forward to discussing other members of the team in the next video and moving on to the actual principles of treatment of each of these subspecialties and then getting into the details of what is actually done in each stage of the disease. So stay tuned. Thank you.